We all need to make changes now for our future. By catching public transport just once a week, instead of driving, the amount of poisonous CO2 released into the atmosphere will reduce by more than 600,000 tonnes every year. A small change can make a big difference. Authorised by the state government. Hello. I'm Terry. Between the years of 2004 and 2006, I was lucky enough to be selected to drive the new Echo buses in Perth and Western Australia. We had three buses, had nine drivers, and we're trialling the new hydrogen fuel cell technology. This is a story, a driver's eye view, of what it was like to drive these buses. In the Bus Preservation Society's journal, The Rattler, number 431, Malcolm Crosby describes these buses for us. Here is a synopsis of what he wrote. The prototype hydrogen fuel cell bus, a left-hand drive Mercedes-Benz, had been demonstrated to Transperth in Perth in the year 2000. Then, three Mercedes-Benz models to Tara hydrogen fuel cell buses were used in Perth between 2004 and 2007 as a part of an international trial of 33 buses to study the operation of alternative energy driven buses. A diagram produced when the buses were operating shows the hydrogen tanks were attached above the roof at the front of the bus, with the fuel cells midway above the roof and the air conditioning for fuel cell and passengers near the rear of the bus. The refuelling point at the rear of the bus was electronically monitored. When we did our training on hydrogen handling and on the buses themselves, we were told that each bus was powered by an electric traction motor, similar to that used by modern diesel electric locomotives, driving an automatic transmission which delivered its power to the rear wheels. I believe the fuel cell stacks delivered 600 volts DC, which had fed to an inverter at the back of the bus, which transformed the power into 450 volts three-phase AC for the traction motor. The only exhaust was water, characterised by a plume of steam coming out of the exhaust pipe when the bus was under throttle. Each morning, we had to climb a set of portable steps up to check the coolant on the roof, then come down and unplug the charging cables for the starting batteries before firing up the fuel cells. This required a lot of power from the starting batteries to begin operations. We only had a, a window of about two to three starting attempts before the battery went flat. From memory, we started out showcasing the bus in prominent places. We started to do special running for civic leaders, government officers, dignitaries, before doing Cottesloe shuttles to the beach. One of the great highlights of my career on the, the hydrogen bus was driving Prince Charles, who was now King Charles, from the Subiaco railway station to the Subiaco Sustainable Demonstration Home. As a special treat for us, I was given, on CDs, a video copy of the trip from the driver cam and saloon cam. I've edited these for us to have a look at.
We then did the cat services. We were told in the morning, given a worksheet, and said leave the depot at such and such a time, go out, do red cats, be back at the depot by such and such a time. The red cats were doing a five minute service. I would drive to the terminus at the Wacker, park behind the last bus, and then I would leave two and a half minutes after the bus in front had departed. After he finished with the cats, we then did the city circle running, then the city to Balladura, Morley and Morley locals. The buses were over width. They were 2.55 metres wide compared to the 2.45 of the regular services. We had to be very careful to start when we were putting into bus stops. They were also quite tall. They were 3.7 metres high compared to the 3.2 of the regular buses. So some areas were off limits like the Warwick bus station and the Sutherland Street railway underpass due to low clearances at these locations. Before taking them out on the road in the morning, we had to clean the back panels. The steam and the condensed water would come out, pick up road grime and coat the back of the bus in black stuff. The wheelchair ramp was on the centre doors and it was manually operated. We had to unlock the rear ramp cover, extract the ramp manually and then put it back in once it had been used. It was a fiddly job, so in my spare time I practiced ramp deployment to minimise operational delays on the road. When the buses first arrived, they had elephant ear mirrors on both sides. We found that the right hand mirror caused a massive blind spot at roundabouts. If there was a vehicle anywhere on the roundabout, we couldn't see it all because of the mirror. They changed the mirror over for us so that we could enhance our safety. I am thankful to WA Transit for posting a short clip of a cab ride on Ecobus 3. Engine power was in between the diesels and the compressed natural gas buses. On the South Street Hill, on the Circle Route, Swan Transit's diesels used to walk away from us, but past Transit's compressed natural gas buses were often exactly the same as ours, if not just a bit slower. The engineer told me that the power output was controlled by the onboard computer, adjusted to give the best balance between power and fuel range. He said it could be programmed powerful enough to snap axles, but basically you would run out of hydrogen before it left the depot. Thanks to King Rose, we can see one of the sister hydrogen buses at work in Europe.
the end of our shift, we'd refuel our buses from the dedicated bowser located in the depot. The hydrogen was stored in tanks on a trailer inside a blast-proof enclosure which is built in the depot. At the end of the trial, the buses were deregistered and then stored for a while in the blast-proof enclosure before they were removed from the depot. Ecobus 2 was donated to the Bus Preservation Society of Western Australia at Whiteman Park and unfortunately Ecobus 1 and Ecobus 3 were scrapped. We will finish our video with a glimpse of another innovation in sustainable transport energy in Perth. Namely, the introduction of a hybrid diesel electric bus number 2245 seen here at the Cat Depot. The date is February 2014. Driving the cat buses with the Echo Bus made such an impact upon me that after the trial had finished, I then went to the cats, which I drove, until I retired. <laughs>